Hello, it's Scott Manley here. If you're a fan of space like me, you've probably spent a lot of time watching Mission Control during some missions. You might even try to have gleaned some data from those screens. Or you might wonder, what the heck do all those screens mean? So I actually want to go into what's on some of those big screens, or at least the interesting ones that you can see during Mission Control. This is the NASA ISS mission control. You've got the big map screen in the middle and some screens off to the side. This is the Russian equivalent and you'll see they also have a map. These maps are very common and there's a lot of features that are shown on these maps. To the casual observer, this just looks like a map of the Earth with a bunch of squiggly lines all over it. But the squiggly lines provide at a glance information to the mission controllers. So what are all the lines? What do they all mean? First up, all the important vehicles are shown on orbit. You can probably see the ferry there. The, the space station is also sitting underneath it. That's their current location. These lines show the next few orbits, where it's come from, and then where it's going to be over the coming uh, number of orbits. Now, these lines form waves as the spacecraft is expected to move between its northernmost and southernmost latitude during each orbit. But also during each orbit, which is about 90 minutes, the Earth rotates by about 22 and a half degrees. So each crossing of the equator is about 22 degrees further west due to the rotation of the Earth. As the spacecraft move around the Earth, they also move in and out of sunlight. And that's important for spacecraft which are powered by solar power. So they mark the location of the sun. And you can also see where they mark the location of daylight. But furthermore, if you look, they've also marked the location of every place where it crosses from night into day or day into night. It's also important to realize that because the space station is over 200 miles high, even although it may be over the dark side of the Earth, it might still be getting illuminated by the sun. Frequently, the display will include an exact countdown to the next event, in this case, a countdown to sunset. There's also a bunch of other numbers there that are pretty self-explanatory. Latitude, longitude, altitude. Inclination is pretty obvious if you know orbital mechanics. Beta is one that you might not recognize. The beta angle is the angle of the plane of the orbit of the International Space Station to the Sun. With the space station having an inclination of about 52 degrees to the Earth's axis and the Earth's axis having an angle of about 23 degrees to the Sun, those can sometimes add up and give you a beta angle that's as high as 75 degrees. And in that situation, the space station doesn't have a day-night cycle. It remains continuously in sunlight, which has big uh, issues for thermal control. When the space shuttle was still flying, it was not allowed to go to the space station during these conditions because it would overheat. I found this image online showing the next day-night transition as being 104 hours away, and you'll see that it actually breaks the formatting of the text box. And you'll notice that there's none of these little ticks showing the day-night transitions in this particular condition. This version also gives you a clearer look at where the space station is. And you'll see that there's actually a circle around the space station. That is the horizon distance. That's how far people on the space station can look out to ground targets. Because this is mapped onto a sphere, it gets stretched out into this sort of bean shape when it is far north and south. But that is essentially a circular distance. Similarly, if you look up over Russia, you will see a number of yellow circles with letters in them. These are all ground stations that are providing service to the Russian section of the space station when it's in line of sight to these. The US, of course, uses the TDRS network. There's three satellites marked on the map in this case, and they are color-coded. You notice one is green, one is yellow, and one is blue. These are satellites in geosynchronous orbit. They're not necessarily geostationary. They're allowed to wander above and below the equator. But on the map, you'll see that there are also green, yellow, and blue areas marked off. And these aren't the areas of coverage. These are the areas of no coverage. And these areas of no coverage are actually smaller than the areas of coverage. And this might seem confusing. If you think about a satellite, how could it see more than half of the planet? Well, this is again the projection of where the uh, space station would be. 
So the space station could be above a latitude and longitude, which is out of sight of the space sta of the satellite. But because the space station is 200 miles up, it's able to look over the horizon and see the satellite. So that's why these areas are marked that way. Now, if I take this image and zoom out a little, we can actually see that to the top right, there's some timers here. And you'll see loss of signal LOS and AOS. These both correspond to TDRS satellites. So these are the times when they're expected to lose the signal from one satellite and gain the signal on the other satellite. You'd also see things like crew sleep. You might be managing the most complex machine ever built, but you also have to manage the crew and the crew have certain schedules that they are required to keep. And so you have to incorporate the crew sleep schedule into all your planning. And if I move to the right, you'll also see this display, which is quite common because it basically shows all the events, all the cautions, the warnings, the alarms, and allows everybody to keep track of it. Here, it's looking fine right now. But one thing that might cause a problem, cause an alarm, is you know, the high radiation area that is marked on the map. The SAA, the something awful area. No, wait, no, the South Atlantic Anomaly. That is the part of the Earth's magnetosphere where the Van Allen belts come down very close to the surface of the Earth. So when the space station flies through this area, it's getting an extra high dose of radiation. And it's been known that the laptops will sometimes crash, they will get bit errors. Sometimes astronauts, they will actually see little flashes of light from the radiation. So that's marked on the map because it causes problems often enough that you want to know when you're flying through it. So yeah, that's a quick overview of what you might see on the big screens. Of course, that's the stuff that everybody gets to see. The really interesting stuff is happening down on these small screens, and you'll never be able to read this on any live stream, but that's where the real information is happening. That's where the smart people are doing the work, analyzing the information and making the decisions. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.